morning we need some more families like my containers to walk in. <laughs> they feel two benches. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Good to have all of you. I, I've seen all of them before. And I just thank God for all of you that are here this morning. Let me very quick before we begin our morning uh, service this morning. Alan Holloway needs our prayers. Uh, Rita Brazel sent me a note and said, please pray for Alan. I met a lady by the name of Vivette, V-E-V-E-T-T-E. She goes to Kingdom Builders, a church over in Columbia, and they've lost their pastor. He passed away. said, please remember that church and remember them in prayer. And I told her that our church would do that. Do you have an urgent request anywhere in the house of God? Quickly. Okay. Yes. Amen. Yes, amen. Okay, that's that sounds better, doesn't it? Brother Wayne's with us this morning. I thank God for that. Yes. Lynn called me. She's doing much better since they took her appendix out. Let's remember them and prayer. All of our people that are not here this morning, you look around and you see who it is. But I tell you what, I, I can't wait to get to heaven. Amen. Richard's talking about the way that God's created the heaven and the earth and how man messed it up. But you know God's still going to have his way. He talked about the center of the earth, how the, the earth is the center of the universe. Well, one day, uh, uh, you know, we know that the center of the earth, as far as we know it, is Israel. And one day, God, the new Jerusalem from heaven, is coming down. Where is it going to come down at? In Israel, in Jerusalem. It's going to be the setting in the center, not only of this earth, but the center of everything. And God's creating a new heaven and a new earth. And everything's going to be like he said it was going to be in the beginning. I'm telling you, that devil thinks he messed everything up. That devil's a liar. God is God and God is still going to have his way. No matter what has to happen, God is still on the throne, children of God. Praise the Lord. Do you have a prayer request behind me? All right, uplifting of hands. God sees every need. He knows every heart. Let's stand one more time. Going to go to God in prayer, and then Judy's going to give us a song after that. Tangie, you're walking up. Lead us to the Lord. Almighty God, thank you, God, for who you are. Thank you for Calvary, God. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. We honor you in the house of God this morning. We just magnify you. God, you've heard the praise reports, and we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you that you're still healing and delivering and setting free. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing and going to do in this service this morning. Thank you, Lord, that you're still on the throne. And no matter what takes place, we've got a God that is a victorious God. And Lord, have your way in this service. Meet every need. Heal, deliver, and set free in this house. Touch our singers. Touch our musicians this morning. God, use them in the house. And God, we just one more time praise you for who you are. And the church says, stand or sit, ever how you're comfortable. Let's worship this morning. Oh, 
will be coming to receive our morning tithes and offerings. Let me uh, remind you, next Sunday morning, we're in homecoming, having homecoming. We begin at 1030 in the morning. There'll be no Sunday school and be no night service that night. But 1030 next Sunday morning. Invite everybody you can. If they, if they ever come to this church, if they've ever visited, they're invited back for homecoming. We used to go to my mama's house on the holidays, Brother Donald. Mama say, y'all coming home? You coming back home? We want everybody to visit back home next Sunday morning. We're going to be feeding them. Got a, a great speaker that will be speaking for us next week. And 
I'm just looking for an awesome time. So let's see if we can't bring everybody you can next week. Good to see you, Renee. Brother Richard, would you pray? Yes, Lord. Have your way in this service, Lord. Your will be done. Amen. Let's worship. Jesus. 
this to me. Counselor, our friends to me. My God is He. He's saving me, keeping me from all sin and shame. Wonderful is my Redeemer, praise His name. Wonderful, wonderful, Jesus is to me. Wonderful is my Redeemer, praise His name. Wonderful, wonderful, Jesus is to me. Counselor, Prince of Peace, mighty God is He. He's saving me, keeping me from all sin and shame. Wonderful is my Redeemer, praise His name. Wonderful, it's wonderful, Jesus is to me. Counselor, Prince of Peace, mighty God is He. He's saving me, keeping me from all sin and shame. Wonderful is my Redeemer, praise His name. Hallelujah. Sister Becky's coming to give us a special this morning. Pray for her as she comes. Isn't God good? Think of the people not able to be here. Thank you, Sister Becky. Oh, you want the yellow. I'll get it. Okay. There you go. You may have to cut her up on that one. Well, when, I'll test it by telling you something first. <laughs> when I was a child, my grandma had this picture in the den. And I'll tell y'all I'm a crier. It was a picture of Jesus in the sky. And the people were rising up in the sky to meet him. And I don't know whatever happened to that picture, but it stuck in my mind as a child. So just worship as I sing Midnight Cry, because one day it won't just be a picture on the wall.
The signs of the times They're appearing everywhere And I can almost hear the Father Shall rise when Jesus steps out on a cloud to call his children. The dead in Christ shall rise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're about at the moment of the midnight hour. We about there. We about, by the help of the Almighty God, got this thing lit. Amen. So thankful that we serve a God who's helped us every day of our life. I don't know how people live without him. I just don't know. I don't understand that he's done so much for me, and nobody can tell me he does not exist. He's done, done enough for me. He has manifested himself in my life so many times in so many ways that yeah, now I've done come too far to believe that stuff that they're telling now. Praise God. All right, you ready for the word? I'm going to be ministering on the pot and the oil out of 2 Kings 4, verses 1 and 2. The pot and the oil. If you're able, stand one more time and let me pray first. Father, God, I am so grateful to you this morning. If anybody knows, I know that it cannot be accomplished unless your spirit, God, does the work. I am a mere vessel. I'm only a human being. But God, it is by your spirit within me that you can do the work that needs to be worked here this morning. Help me one more time, Father. Use me in this house. Touch that need, especially that one that's nearest to eternity lost. And we'll never fail to praise you. For it's in the name of Jesus that we ask it. And the church says, Amen. Amen. 2 Kings 4, verses 1 through 2. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, 
Thy handmaid has not anything in the house save or except a pot of oil. And the church says, Amen. You might be seated. Our Sunday school lesson this morning was on creation. Richard did a good job in bringing that out. I, I thought he did anyway. And God created, he created the heavens and the earth. It wasn't a big bang, it wasn't anything. Except God spoke and it banged, it come together. Everything that he wanted done. He created mankind, the Bible says, in his own image. Man is unique. Man himself has a creative quality within him. Look how far that we have come in the last 100, even 200 years. Man has a lot of wisdom, but they don't beat God. And when God created the heavens and the earth, darkness, the Bible said, was upon the face of the deep. And God spoke and God changed it all. And then he said, it is good. And after he created mankind, he said, it is very good. But before there was ever a praise team, before there was ever even a tambourine, God praised himself. He did it all by himself. He is mighty God who stepped out on nothing and he said let there be something and it became whatever God said that it was going to become because God is a sovereign God. Brother Richard, they can write those articles all they want to. That the Holy Spirit is just a mere, what did it say? Feeling or something pitiful it said there is no uh third party of the godhead well i beg their pardon because the word of god said there's god the father there's god the son and there is god the holy spirit you listen to me this morning god totally reigns and God knows the ending from the beginning. He knows the answer before the question is even asked. He sits on the circle of this earth and all power is given unto him and nobody elected him and nobody can put him out. Give him a hand. God is an intelligent, I call him person. He's a God. He is a thinking God. He has a plan. He has a purpose. He has wisdom. He has a strategy for my life and for your life. He created everything written in the book of Genesis just like he said he did it. He created from the beast of the field to the fish in the sea to the birds in the air and there's one thing that all of them had in common. Everything that he created was the fact that it was seed. There was seed within everything that God created. Everything. And all these things multiplied. And each one of them multiplied after their own kind. Apples produces apples. Peaches produce peaches. Mankind produced mankind. Listen, monkeys did not produce you and I. Okay? The embryo in a woman's womb, and it is a man according to God, does not get born, Brother Richard, live a while, ever, however long it might live, and then suddenly change into a woman. That is a lie from hell. It does not happen. So God created everything living to be self-propitiating, self-producing. Richard, you talked about that. He created it one time, and from that time on, it was to reproduce itself to perpetuate its own existence and generations were to come from that. Uh, and it did it by discovering what it was that God had bound up on the inside of it. 
the seed. Listen, there's a treasure inside of you and I. There is a treasure in the depths of mankind, the ability to propitiate yourself, and it is hidden somewhere on the inside of yourself, children of God. It's not only that way in the natural, but it's also that way in the spiritual when you have a born-again spirit that comes from the Almighty God. There's a treasure in the depths of you. Remember that. In Genesis 8 and 22, we see the Bible said that it's going to be seed time and harvest. That's the strategy of God. He did not create everything living without the seed inside of it. I'm stressing that this morning. As long as the earth remains, the Bible said there is to be seed time and harvest. That was the way that God created it. And that leaves you in your spirit realm. When you're born again, you have dunamis power on the inside of your spirit. That spirit has the ability through the power of God to move in and produce the promises of everything God said is in his word. You don't understand what you really have on the inside of you. The word of God is a living word. It is living word. It is alive. And when it is spoken from an individual that has the faith to understand what God has placed on the inside of them, it brings with it, when it is spoken, the faith to bring into existence whatever that word says is going to happen. If it is healing, when you speak healing in faith, it has the power to implant within you that word to bring forth the healing that God says is going to come. If you need victory, the power is in the word to bring victory. The word is alive and it is inside of you. And we're doing teaching some of them on some Wednesday nights. We're teaching on body, soul, and spirit. We're teaching on some things that are hopefully is opening that up to you and I. How the operation of the spirit and the soul and the body takes place. And exactly how they work together. And how God does what he does through us. But there's something inside of each of you. And now you know why the enemy fights you the way that he fights you. It's not over what's on you. Uh-uh. He is fighting you over what is in you. And if you and I can discover what God has placed in us, then everything around us is going to begin to change. And I believe that we need to spend more time in looking what's in us and quit discerning other people. Quit looking and trying to guess what somebody else has got in them or what they are like because your deliverance is not going to come from learning what is in me or what's in somebody else. It's going to come when you discern what God has placed inside of you. What is in your house? This body is a container. This body is the house of God. We are the container. And the spirit, we're the pot. And the spirit of God, the oil, is what that spirit is. We are containers and we contain in this pot the spirit of the God of the universe. Listen, there's something in you that the enemy hates you for. It is a hidden treasure and it is locked up in the bowels of your spirit and the only hope that the enemy has to is to really to paralyze your productivity 
And to cause you to not realize what it is that Christ has placed on the inside. And do you know how he does that? The enemy does that by bringing external circumstances into your life that continually grieve the Spirit of God and its problems and its troubles and its situations that will pull you away from your faith. He's, you've got to fight the good fight of faith. The devil's been defeated, but he's trying to pull your faith out of you. So the enemy brings troubles, and he does it over and over and over and over, trying to wear you down and wear you out so that your faith will be defeated. And he does it by problems and situations. And listen, what we need to do, I believe with all my heart, somebody here is going to receive the word deep down on the inside of you, and faith is going to arise out of your spirit. And I believe with all of my heart, somebody is about to explode with faith. But what you need to do, you need to find somebody that you can get a hold of who knows who they are and follow them because you cannot be mentored by somebody who is confused. You need somebody who knows who they are in Christ. It causes me to think about Elijah and Elisha. Elisha was plowing behind all of those uh, oxen and the prophet by the name of Elijah, God had sent him to go there. And he goes by and he passes by Elisha. And suddenly when he walked by, he saw something or he felt something. Like you said, Brother Richard, this morning, you get around a good godly individual, something you can feel it on them. I, when my mama was alive and our older people were alive, you don't see it as much today, but you could walk by them and I'm telling you their face would shine with the glory of God as that anointing was on their life. Why? Because they spent their time on their knees before God. We don't have much of that anymore. But I'm here to tell you, he looked at Elijah and he said, I've got to follow that man. I've got to follow him. He's got something that I need. And I don't, have, I don't have to have a title to follow him. I don't have to have a big salary. I don't have to have a big name. But just let me go and follow him because there's something unlocked that needs to be unlocked inside of me. And I believe that man can guide me and show me exactly what it is. Come on. What he was saying is, I want my pot. I want my container to be full. How many of you want that pot to be full this morning? Come on. As a matter of fact, he said, that's not enough for me. I want a double portion. I want a double portion of his spirit. I want more. Hallelujah to God. And then the older man, Elijah, says to the young man, Elisha, when he told him, I want a double portion of what you got, he said, you've asked me a hard thing. You've asked me something I really can't give to you. But he said, uh, he said, you got to be able to see me when I go up and maybe you can get it. And a lot of people don't comprehend that. See, what Elisha saw, he wouldn't turn him loose, Brother Richard. No matter which city he went to, didn't matter what town he went to, there was Elisha falling right in behind him. I can see him holding to his coattails. You're not going this way or that. How many times did Elisha try to stop him? He said, no, 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 you stay right here. He said, uh, uh I'm following you. You said, I got to be able to see you. Well, it wasn't just seeing him in the natural because he said, he said, my father, my father, he said, the horseman and the chariot, he saw into the spirit realm the chariots and the horses of Israel that came in a whirlwind and picked up Elijah and took him into heaven you got to be able to discern some spiritual things if you're going to get a double portion within your life come on give him a hand clap you see, 
We're living in a day and an age when people want everything easy. They want your stuff easy. Stuff that you sweated over. Stuff that you suffered through. Things that you prayed through for years. And they'll walk up to you and they'll say, lay hands on me. I want your, what you got on you. I want a double portion of what you got. But to get it, honey, you got to walk with me. You got to suffer with me. You got to endure hardness. And if you're still standing when it's all over with, just maybe God might give it to you. But somebody needs to stop trying to give your glory away to people that don't deserve it. That's a little bit harsh, but I'm telling you the truth. Stop giving your wisdom to people who don't even understand what you're saying to them. Stop casting your pearls before swine and they turn around and trample you and they rend the name of God when you speak something to them. Quit giving it to people easily. Find somebody that'll go through persecution and walk with you when nobody else likes you. And if they're still there after all of that, then just maybe God might release that glory unto you. But Elisha has something that causes Elisha, or Elijah had something that caused Elisha to want what he had, and Brother Richard, he leaves the familiar. He leaves to the familiar and he clings to the unfamiliar. You see, so many times we cling to our traditions. Not necessarily because they're working, but because we're comfortable in our traditions. And we don't like to get out of our comfort zones. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. We know the story of how Elisha follows Elijah till he eventually gets that double portion. And when he does, it was his mentor spirit, Elisha became the recipient of Elijah's mantle, his spirit, his vigor, his glory, Everything that was spiritual, God gave him a double portion. And his anointing was so awe-inspiring that Elisha was willing, and I say it again, to walk away from the familiar just to have a taste of the unfamiliar. And folk don't do that if they're not hungry. Problem is people are not hungry. They're not hungry. That's right. And understand, when you see Elisha coming, the one who received that double portion, what you're seeing is generations of glory. Because he brings the power of the ages and the dispensations that, that his predecessor and others had before him. And if Elijah shows up or Elisha shows up, he also has Elijah with him in the spirit realm. I hope y'all understand that. For the spirit that Elisha had is nothing except a double portion that his mentor had. I think of my mother. I, I preach about my mama often. A great woman of God. Raised 15 children. Preached the word of God. Many, many souls saved under her ministry. I was one of them. I've told y'all that numerous times. But I think of my mother. How that in her day and age, the wisdom that my mother had in the word of God. She preached things and God gave her understanding of things that was not yet enlightened to a lot of the world. They didn't have the computers then that people have now. They couldn't hear a lot of things. Wisdom has increased. Spiritual knowledge has increased in these last days. But my mother preached things then that they're only just now preaching. And I thought about that. How that my mother laid hands on me. And how she prayed for me. 
How that one day I went into the house, into the dining room of her, her home, the one we was raised in, all of us children, and would fight over a chicken leg, didn't we, Richard? Because there wasn't much to eat then. And how my mama would sit there with her Bibles open and she'd lay hands on me and God had given me a dream. And I didn't understand the dream. I didn't know what it was about. And it was, and I'm not even going to try to explain it except there were, I was wrapped in gold. There was golden cellophane and I was wrapped in it. And there were pipes coming in and out of that. I had no idea what it was talking about and how that when my mother said it was the Spirit of God that's going to be flowing in out of your the vessel and when she said that I was filled with the Holy Spirit of God and I remember I was set on fire I started just running through her house I couldn't stop I stayed on fire I'm talking about a spiritual fire that burned on the inside of me there's times that the embers have got low there's times that I wondered God where's the fire I need a, a match somewhere to light me back up but I said God never let it totally go out of my life and I'm here to tell you I believe with all my heart that God gave me a double portion of what my mother had in her ministry I believe that but when he goes to this house he comes to this house the prophet of God does in our scripture reading and he does it understanding the generations, the generational move of God. And the house is where one of the spiritual prophets whom, uh, you know, had studied under this man of God, one of the sons of the prophet, and he had died, Brother Richard. And when he opens up the door, there is death in the house. There's death there. The prophet is dead the wife is there. She's the same as dead. Her sons are there who are about to be sold to the creditors because there was a debt owed before her husband died and she had no way of paying that debt. And there was nothing but an atmosphere of death and there was no joy and there was no glory and there was no anointing anywhere. You see, when you walk into a house or into a church. And if there is more death than there is life, you will hear more complaining than you will praising. And Elisha walks in, and the widow immediately begins to regurgitate the bitterness, and she says, my husband was a spiritual son of the prophet. He served the Lord, and he's dead. What do you do when it looks like serving God doesn't work? Come on, we've all been there in one way or another. This woman was bitter, Brother Richard. She was angry, and she pours out her grief upon the prophet, not understanding who it was that had come into her house. He represented God on the earth. You see, you don't have to be up front to have an up front anointing. What you see up here did not begin with those who get up here. It began way back yonder somewhere. And folk don't understand who you are or what you had to go through just to get up front where you are. And whenever God comes into the house, something is going to happen, Jackie. Something is going to shift. And this woman is living in death. She's living in deep debt and she thought she had no, no alternatives except to sell her sons to pay, make slaves out of them to pay that debt. And there's somebody here this morning, you think you have no alternative but to do what you're doing in order to pay the debt that you've got. But I'm here to tell you this morning, something's about to shift. Something is about to shift. And Elisha comes in and he shifts it with two questions. First of all, <coughs> excuse me, 
He says, what, am, what can I do for thee? Or what am I to do for thee? Now, if you listen, that first question never did get answered. She didn't answer it. Because there's sometimes when the question is bigger than a depressed mind can respond to. Y'all ever been in that kind of a situation? I have. I have, children. I know what that's like. There can come into your life, even into a child of God's life. It shouldn't be that way, but we have all faced it. When there is a level of depression that will not allow you to receive a message of faith because you cannot receive what you cannot conceive. And you can go through that. And thank God for praying people who can pray you through that and out of that. But in the absence of an answer to that question, he submits another question. He said, what is in your house? And he's saying, you have not discerned what is in your house. You say you've got nothing but a little pot of oil. You're not discerning what God has really put on the inside of you. You see, the problem is when we live in a house, it becomes common to us. Come on, it does. But it's a dangerous thing to get used to a divine gift because if you get used to it, you won't use it. So many times people walk into the church house and they treat it as common. Oh, y'all got quiet on that one. They don't respect the house of God. They don't respect the one that they've come to worship and to praise. And they treat it as though it is nothing. But let me ask you a question. What is in your house? Nothing but a pot of oil. And what the prophet is trying to teach this woman is that God will most always use something that you already have. Listen, he didn't go to the store to feed the 5,000. He used the five loaves of bread and the two fishes. And he multiplied something that was already there. Your blessing is not going to come from anybody else but from you discovering what God has put on the inside of you. What is in your house? All I got is a pot of oil. She didn't discern what she had. Two things that have to come together. That's the pot and the oil. The container and what's inside of it. Listen, God will always work with containers and contents. When you can understand both of these, then you listen to me. It will unlock something on the inside of you and faith will arise out of you that can move mountains. See, we're always looking for somebody else. And nothing wrong with that. Many a time in my life, I've looked for a point of contact for faith. If I can just but touch the hem of the garment. If I can just get to this, this one or that one, you know, they got the faith. What's in you? What's in you? The same thing that's in them is in you. You understand? My Lord God. The disciples were, they were containers. And that's why Jesus told them, go to Jerusalem. And when they were there, they were, they were filled with the Spirit of the Almighty God. And the, the containers got filled until it spills out on somebody else. But our trouble is we become preoccupied with the frailty of the container. And we don't appreciate the value of the content. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. But the Bible said we have this treasure. The treasure of the Spirit of God in an earthen vessel. 
that the excellency of the power might be of God and not of man. Listen, this container you're looking at this morning might not look like it's very much, but you ought to see what I got down on the inside of me. Oh, holy God, this morning, he said to this woman who's in debt, he said, tell your sons who you're about to sell for that debt, to tell them to go to the neighbors and borrow some vessels, and don't borrow just a few of them, but get all you can get. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This woman is already in debt. And he's telling her to go borrow some more. But you see, the man of God knew that God had more resources than she had need. And he could open up the windows of heaven and pour her out blessings that she could not contain. I'm telling somebody here, God is about to get ready and he's going to release something under you. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or could even think according to the power that worketh in us. What is that power? It's the power of the Spirit of God. He said, borrow the vessels. Borrow not a few. Because when this thing starts happening, church, it's going to be big. It's going to be supernatural. It's going to be on a higher level. And that's why the devil is trying to discourage some of you before you can get your release. You keep on believing. You keep on holding on. I don't care if it's for you. I don't care if it's for your child. If it's for your spouse, whoever it's for, you keep believing because God is able to do what he says he's going to do no matter what hell says against it. Come on, give him a hand clap. The enemy knows that your eyes have not seen your ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that our God has prepared for us. In fact, you need to enlarge your cords. You need to strengthen your stakes and get ready for a big thing that is anything too hard for God. No, it's not, church. Somebody praise him for what he is about to do in your life. Holy God, holy God, holy God. Come on, church, praise him. Holy God. Now listen, because there's a principle here. He said, when you get the empty vessels, bring them in and shut the door. You see, when you get ready to get a miracle... You're going to have to shut out those doubters. You're going to have to shut out fear. Everything that's negative, you're going to have to shut it out. And if you don't, they will mess up your vision because they cannot handle what God is about to do in your life. you got to get this word, get it in you and shut the door. And when they shut the door, supply flowed into the demand. <laughs> you see, God is attracted to capacity. The greater the capacity, the greater the flow. She said, I only got one pot of oil. But she didn't understand, Sister Roby, it was a bottomless pit. It was a bottomless pot. And as long as there was a demand, supply would continue to flow. The oil continued to flow. God says, I got more in this pot than what you think I do. And I've got enough spirit to meet every need everywhere. And everything full got set aside. But you know what our problem is? When we come to church, and a matter of fact, you even do it before you come to church, is that we get next to people that's full. 
You need to set them full people aside and you need to find you somebody hungry. Find somebody that's hungry for the things of God. You want to know who's hungry? Come over here on a Monday night. The prayer meeting. You'll find some hungry people over here. Oh, glory to God. And the oil began to flow. And it poured out and it poured out and it poured out. And as long as there was emptiness in front of it, there was a flow coming out of it. And when they could find no more demand, the oil stayed. Y'all with me? I'm about through, but understand. There is a miracle living in your house. Y'all hear me? We have, I say it again, we have not discerned what God has put inside of us, church. God has promises in his word. And they're locked up on the inside of us. And if we can get enough of us out of the way until it comes up out of your spirit, man, and it begins to flow forth in faith, there is nothing that God will not do for those who love him and those who serve him. But in order for the oil to flow, you got to respect the pot that it comes from. Y'all hear? If you don't respect yourself, if you don't respect the other, the other pots around you, Enough to put even yourself into a position to where you can flow. You're not going to get anything from God. you got to realize you are a child of the living God. You have royal blood flowing through your veins. The devil doesn't want that to come alive in you. But you can't, he can't stop it when you get down with God and in the Word. And from what God's already given you, there is a flow that comes out of you. How many lives have you touched and you didn't even realize you was flowing? How many times have you witnessed to somebody around you and you have no idea what you did for their life? You think it's useless. Judy, we think it doesn't, we witnessed our lost family members. We think it's not doing a lick of good. Oh, no, 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 it is. Oh, yes, it is. They can't get away from what you're saying. Do you hear me? It is the oil that comes, you know where it comes from? The olive berry. And it's the olive for it to release the oil out of those olive groves. That, that olive had to be crushed. And the greater the crushing, the greater the oil. You hear? And if you want to see a real flow of the Holy Spirit, stop fooling around with these folks who haven't been through anything. Because it takes crushing. And the oil is not going to flow from them. I don't know about you, but I need some fresh oil from the throne. Does anybody in here need fresh oil? What you've been going through, some of you thought you're going to die in this situation. But God wasn't allowing you to be killed. He was allowing you to be crushed. And the oil that's about to come out of your life is beyond anything that you could ever imagine. Stand all over the house. Do any of you see the connection yet between the olive berry and the widow woman? Both of them had to be crushed. You see, it's not just about the berry being crushed. It's not even just about the oil. But it's about breakings and bruising and pain and crushing that we go through in this life the very thing that people is trying to hide from somebody else is what God wants to use in your life what you go through God wants you to comfort somebody else with the comfort that he comforted you with and you can't do that if you haven't gone through something listen Jesus was crushed 
What makes us think his followers won't go through crushing? But then he was anointed without measure. Do you want that anointing? Come on. What do you got in the pot? What do you got in your pot? What have you got in the house? Somebody needs to say, I've got the spirit of the living God deep down on the inside of me. And devil, you might not like it, but I'm going to believe what the word of God says. I can believe. Go ahead, Judy. This altar is open. If you need to pray about anything, if you're lost, this is a good time. Come to this altar. If you want that fresh oil, if you want anointing, Make your way up here. Or kneel or sit or do something. I can't do it for you. You got to do it.
it, church. Come on. We need fresh oil. Yes, God. Yes. Sing it one more time, Judy. I want everybody in the house to stand. If you're able to stand.